And now for Mexico. few changes today in the Mexico lineup as well. Most notably, Kenti Robles, the 20-year-old who has been a substitute in their first two matches. She gets the call today as the starter. Both of these lineups with heavy American influences. Nearly half of the starters in the match today are either born, raised, or attending college in the United States. And here's a look, uh, Kat, at the lineup for New Zealand as they go for their first World Cup win today. Well, look out for number 10, Sarah Gregorius. She scored against England. She has speed. She can get in behind. A little bit of a slower Mexican back line, but the height, again, is going to be the difference. Look for Rebecca Smith and Erseg, the two center backs for New Zealand, to try and get ahead on every set piece possible. Gregorius had a goal in their England match. She's been a starter up top for them in both of their matches at the Women's World Cup as the captains will come together with the official Jenny Pumpfist for the coin toss. Thank you. Nice. You were waiting. So you choose yellow yes. or blue? Yellow. Blue is yours? Blue? Okay. Yours yellow. Woohoo! Woo! Look at that! <laughs> yellow. Yeah. That side. And the ball is yours. You No, she choose that side okay. and you would go that way with the ball. Okay. Good improvisation by the referee. Rebecca Smith, Maribel Dominguez, the two captains of their sides. Awesome. Out there with Pumpfist from Sweden, the referee today. And for Mexico, a couple of different adjustments in their lineup from their last uh, go-round. And that tough loss, a 4-0 defeat. And they'll try to bounce back from that today. And they are bringing in a lot of attacking players because they know of the goal differential. Look for number 19, Monica Ocampo. She scored against England on the long ring shot. They're going to have to be shooting all day. It's going to be short. It's going to be long. They have to do as much as they can attacking-wise, and that's why you're seeing so many players forward for Mexico. And a young defense in front of the 16-year-old keeper, Santiago. They will have to be much stronger than they were against Japan. Four goals in, three of them from Homare Sawa in the Japanese hat trick. A list of the substitutes for both sides. Their final match, New Zealand has already been eliminated, but they are trying to end an 0 for 8 stretch in their World Cup history. They will be in the all-white jerseys and Mexico in all black. They are still alive. And an outside chance of advancing. They have to win big, and they have to hope Japan wins big today over England. Another terrific crowd. The sun is out in Sinsheim. Japan is already in from this group. A couple of the favorites advancing as well. The United States, they'll be playing tomorrow. Germany, they'll be playing later today. Brazil also through. They've been in the finals of the last two World Cups. And this third game, Cat, of group play, always exciting because 
teams from the same groups playing simultaneously, so there can't be any shenanigans going on. Well, I'm very excited about this game. Both, th both of these teams have nothing to lose. Mexico must score a lot, but New Zealand is going for their first ever win. It's going to be a crazy attacking game. I have a feeling, so it's going to be really exciting for us to watch today. This is New Zealand. Allie Riley, one of the Americans, number seven in white, back to Smith, and all the defenders will get a touch. Abby Ersig over to Anna Green in the back. Betsy Hassett, who plays at Cal Berkeley and is a teammate. Of American forward Alex Morgan. The takeaway for Mexico. They are onside. An opportunity. Mayor in Mexico. Strikes in the second minute. And all of a sudden, the five goal differential is down to just four. What a great start for Mexico. Great defensive effort. Betsy has it actually fouled, but the referee plays on. They find Maribel Dominguez right in front of the defense. Mayor does an excellent job of staying on side, and then it is wide open. Looks up, sees the goalkeeper, and it looks like it went right in between her legs. Mayor, a good job of keeping it low. Anytime you keep it low, you have a chance. And for Ben in number one, the keeper for New Zealand, she wishes she had that back because you never want to see that happen as a goalkeeper. Sixth international goal for Stephanie Mayor. And Mexico getting exactly what it wanted, the quick strike. And a 1-0 lead. They have to win and hope for some help from Japan. And now how does this young New Zealand side respond? This is a great start for Mexico. We, we've been talking about the goal differential and to get an early goal that just means that you have a lot more momentum you have a little bit of confidence because now you can hope that Japan scores a couple of goals against England and they if they can just get a couple more there's a chance that they can go through so you're gonna see a lot of attacking from Mexico several different scenarios but they could it be as simple as if Mexico wins this 3-0 say and Japan beats England 2-0 then Mexico is in business and with the way that Japan has been playing, how clinical they've been with possession, and England's defense has been very suspect in the back, it's going to be very interesting to see if, J if Japan can win 2-0, to zero, which gives Mexico a lot of hope. Stephanie Mayor, barely a minute into the match, nutmegging the keeper, Jenny Binden. Dominguez tried to bring it down. And Almayor, the goal scorer. Pass it on her defensively. Throw in for Mexico. They raised some eyebrows and really gained a lot of respect with the draw against England in their first match. They were down early and then struck with the equalizer. And that essentially took away any head-to-head -head tiebreakers with England. They would be even in that department. Hallie Riley plays collegially at Stanford. From distance, just over the bar from Dominguez. She's their most experienced at 32 years of age. Also played in the 1999 World Cup. And she's getting them excited. She saw an opportunity, took a long-range shot. It wasn't on frame, but it wasn't far off either. Look at her. She's excited, trying to get her team into it. She's the captain and the leader. She knows an, that what a great opportunity they have right now. Number nine, Amber Hearn. She's the one that scored the goal against Japan. And here's another look for Mexico. Mayor does a nice job keeping it low. Binden, unfortunately, kept her legs open. As a keeper, you just never want to see that happen. But when you keep it low as a forward... Anything can happen. You keep it on frame. And for Mexico, a great start. Fifth minute in sin time. Back to that defensive line and a touch for Natalie Garcia, who was raised in Valley Center, California. Goes to the University of San Diego, where she is a teammate with this defender, number five, Natalie Vinti. Beat 
the Warbies. Mexico looking to build from the back. Mayor. Up the right side, now to the left. Monica Ocampo, she's got a goal already in the tournament. She gets muscled off the ball by Allie Riley. Young American playing for New Zealand and has really been impressive at that right back position. Establishing herself as one of the best young defenders in the world. Mayor, she might have another opportunity and cleared off the six by Abby Green. Leo Cuellar has to like what he's seen thus far. Been the coach since 97. He's at his second World Cup. He also was a former player in the World Cup with the men's side in 1978 in Argentina. Played in front. Ooh, over the head of Binden. Did she get a mitten on it? She did. Corner kick coming up for Mexico. Binden looks a little unsure right now in goal. Getting it through the legs has really thrown her off her game. Coming out when she probably could have just stayed right on her line. Fortunately, she gets a touch and a corner kick for Mexico. Binden at 38 years of age, born in Belleville, Illinois, and now lives in New Zealand with her husband and son. Ocampo on the corner. Mexico goes short with it. They are the shortest side in the tournament, averaging just five feet, three inches tall. And that's one of the reasons, Kat, why they have been very vulnerable on set pieces throughout this World Cup. Three of their five goals allowed on set plays. And that's one of New, England, uh, New Zealand's strength is the set pieces. They have height in the center defenders, but also in the midfield. They have good height. Amber Hearn up top, number nine for New Zealand, is also very tall. They have to watch out of trying to keep throw-ins and not letting it out for corner kicks. No fouling in or around the goal because it's very dangerous for them. New Zealand looking to equalize in the air or they would have the advantage, but over the head of Hearn. Going to be important here, falling behind quickly for New Zealand not to lose its head and to stay focused and not let some cheap ones get by them on the other end. And we saw them play against Japan where Japan did score early but New Zealand was able to come back with a goal. Unfortunately, they lost that game, but they were able to come back. They have leadership on the squad that helps them to keep their head in the game. But if Mexico were to get another one, that would really put New Zealand down, but it would be really good for Mexico. So it's interesting to see what will happen. New Zealand needs to get a goal back. Pass it. Taken away, Warbies. Dominguez, looking to get it back to Perez. Perez playing in just her second match. She had to sit out a red card suspension in the opener that carried over from their qualifying, where the Mexicans finished CONCACAF in second place behind Canada after that stunning win over the United States in qualifying. Riley pushing forward from the back here for New Zealand, number seven in white. Off the ricochet, Hearn using some of that size. She'll let it go. Off frame. They will certainly want to do their best to pepper the young goalkeeper, Santiago, at 16 years of age. May not be in the best frame of mind, Cat, after the four-goal barrage laid on her by the Japanese in their last match. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how she reacts with her first real test on goal. 4-0 when you lose, it's very hard to recover from, especially for such a young keeper. I'm interested to see, can she respond and make a big save for this Mexican team? Because there's a good chance that will happen, and Mexico really needs her to come up big. Glorious. She had the goal against England that gave 
the Kiwis their first ever lead in a World Cup match. They come into this 0 and 8. That is the longest stretch without a win in World Cup history, and the foul here committed. Yeah, it looks like Mayor went cleats up. Got a piece of uh, Gregorius's cleat as well. She's got to run it off a little bit because that's going to be a bruise. <laughs> Free kick to the edge of the area. And had a couple of hops back to Santiago. A Mexican side that beat New Zealand 5-0 at the Cyprus Cup in March. And they score here two minutes into the match. Their goal differential right now with England for the last spot in Group B is minus four. That game scoreless in the 12th minute with England and Japan. Dominguez picks off the pass. Riley unyielding it right back. And Natalie Vinci will put that one out. into the San Diego native her mother Carmen born in Mexico big fan of watching the US national team play when she was a youngster and now an opportunity to represent her Mexican heritage number five in the back there giving chase settled by Rosie White the teenager Rosie making her first appearance in a World Cup The Mexico defense is doing a nice job right now of not allowing New Zealand to get any good crosses in the box. That was a decent cross from Allie Riley, but not very threatening. And for Mexico in the height difference, they can't allow New Zealand to get in line and play the ball back across because that's very difficult for them to mark in the box. So right now, the defense is doing a nice job of pressuring higher and not allowing them to get in behind. Campo receives. Dominguez, nice piece of playmaking. Ocampo has it taken away. Katie Hoyle with the pick. Looking to find her and up top. Garcia Mendez, another one of the young Americans in the back, born in Los Gatos, California, wearing the number four dark jersey. collegiately at Stanford which is where Riley attended for New Zealand Mayor good tackle from Green this is Haley Morewood she plays with Chelsea in the English League the new Super League in England for the women. We've seen a couple of those pop up in uh, Europe in recent years. The women's Bundesliga getting stronger and stronger in the league in England in its infancy. Of course, the WPS here in the United States in uh, a couple of years' time already establishing itself as the best in the world. Well, it's an exciting time to be a young women's soccer player right now. You have a lot of leagues coming up, getting good opportunities to play against some of the best in the world. And we've talked about how important the youth have been in this World Cup with all the youth World Cups and national teams. It's a great time to really be a young player and develop your skills early so you can start playing on the national team at an earlier age. Well, that score uh, just dropping down off of our scoreboard. That's not good news for Mexico. Ellen White has scored for the English side. They have the 1-0 lead over Japan. So that essentially nullifies 
the goal scored here by Mexico. They have to make up a five-goal difference. And they also have to hope that Japan wins that match. So the job of advancing just got a lot harder for the Mexican side. So Mexico up 1-0 and England up 1-0. If the results hold, then it would be England that would get through and join Japan. And it would be the English that would actually win the group. And Japan would finish second. And that's a good sign for the English squad. One of the things I was most impressed with when I watched Japan was not just how good they were with possession, but their defense was really good, established themselves with nice chemistry, never getting too far apart. So for them to get such an early goal against a good Japanese defense is a good sign for the English crew who have been under a bit of speculation since they haven't done so well in the first two games. Group B matched up in the quarterfinals with Group A, so the winner of... Group B would in all would like would face either Germany or France as well as the second place finisher either Germany or France. That matchup coming up next to determine who wins Group A. United States in action tomorrow against Sweden. That will determine the winner of Group C. That match scheduled for 2.45 tomorrow afternoon East Coast time. What's it like, Kat, in a group stage game three? Uh, obviously, these Mexican players, they've probably already heard about the goal that England has posted. Or do you not try not to pay attention to that? You try not to pay attention to it. You, uh, The coaches know what's going on, but they never tell the players. They try and keep it away so that there's not any added pressure to this game. They've already put it upon themselves to be better, to get as many goals as possible. They don't want to know right now that they've just developed an even bigger hole to overcome. So you keep it amongst the coaches, and they can make the adjustments as the game goes on. 18th minute with Mexico up 1-0. Beth Mullins along with former U.S. World Cupper and Olympic gold medalist Cat Whitehill. This is Allie Riley. Long ball over the top. Hearn trying to run on Santiago at the edge of the area. Marina Garcia Mendez. Ocampo going to run out of time. Ocampo had that absolute cracker of a goal from 35 yards out to equalize against England in their first game of group play. And you can already see Mexico is really pressuring right now. This is a good opportunity for them to put as many numbers high as possible, keep the defense high so they can try and win the ball back in a much better position. Dominguez. The goal scorer, Mayor, chipping it in front and diving to try and get ahead on it. And just out of the reach of Veronica Perez. A great ball from Mayor, bending right into the head of Perez. Perez almost gets to it and just skims across her head. A great effort from Perez to try for the diving header there. The New Zealand defense didn't even have an eye on her. She was wide open in the box, but unfortunately just misses it. A great ball, though, from Mayor, and another great opportunity for Mexico. Some terrific service that time by Mayor and Perez, who scored the game-winning goal against the United States in qualifying. Just missed out. Veronica was raised in Northern California, played collegiately at Washington. Same program that produced U.S. goalkeeper Hope Solo. Ocampo gets it back for the Mexican side. Just turning the 21st minute and in just over a minute gone on the clock when Mexico got the first goal of the match. 
Stephanie Mayor putting it right through the wickets of Jenny Binden in goal for New Zealand. New Zealand uh, trying to utilize a lot of the long ball so far in this first half. They really are. They're doing a pretty good job in the midfield of keeping the ball, but then as soon as it gets to the back, they're trying for that long ball against a, sl a bit of a slower Mexican defense, but it's not working. The pace is just too hard. They need to start playing in through the midfield, finding their forwards a little bit closer in rather than trying for the long ball. Ricochet off the head of Hassett. And then Betsy's going to be whistled for the foul. Of course, the other big news today to come out of New Zealand, the, that tragic earthquake from back uh, in February in Christchurch, and another earthquake today registering 5.3. Fortunately, though, it was up in the North Island in a much uh, less populated area. The last reports that we had, uh, no major injuries to report, but big enough to be felt uh, in Christchurch and in Wellington. Certainly bringing back some bad memories for this New Zealand side. New Zealand trying to put some pressure on, get the equalizer. Hassett, left flank. Hassett trying to create, gets to the byline. Couldn't cut it back in. Mayor is there with the double team. And then Mayor clipped from behind. This is a good work of defending from Robles and Mayor for getting back, not allowing Hassett to get the cross off, and then Hassett trying to get back gets a little clip on Mayor. But a good job of defending for Mexico. I like it. Oh, well, the FIFA Women's World Cup 2011 continues from Germany on Wednesday at 2.30 Eastern on ESPN. It's the United States and Sweden in Group C play. The FIFA Women's World Cup 2011 also available online at ESPN3.com. United States needing uh, just a draw to win the group against Sweden. That would set the United States uh, up with the second place finisher in Group D, which will in all likelihood be the winner of the Australia-Norway match tomorrow. Five different players have scored the five goals so far for the United States in this tournament. There's been a lot of talk about that none of those players are Abby Wambach, but you have to think Abby is professional. She's a great goal scorer. And what I love are her quotes saying that she doesn't care if she scores as long as her team is scoring. And that's really neat to see Abby saying that. She just really wants this World Cup. Gregorius back to Morewood. Haley Morewood. Stymied by Vinti. Yeah, it uh, will be interesting to see how much Wambach or Heather Riley plays, uh, both uh, nursing some injuries. Neither one has practiced the last couple of days for the U.S. in training. Caroline Sager, the captain for Sweden, will also be out with a couple of yellow cards. You're getting a, a good look at the physical play right there. Pulling jerseys, double teaming, and a sandwich. Ocampo running right by Riley, save Binden. Dominguez tried another one and it's blocked in front. Big chance there for Mexico to go up 2 0. That would have been a big goal for Mexico had they scored there to go up 2 0. It would have really taken a lot of the life out of New Zealand. It was a, a Really good opportunity for Mexico to, to get a score there. They had two good shots on frame, but Binden and Smith, number six for New Zealand, were able to stop both of the shots. A good good job of defense for New Zealand. 
Here's a look at it. Ocampo does a nice job of reading the service, getting in front of Allie Riley, number seven. She looks up, plays it high this time, which is why Benin had a better shot at it. And then you didn't see Rebecca Smith making the diving stop on Dominguez's shot. Service up front. Bodies down in the box. Save by Santiago. And then Hearn misses right. Big chance there on the counter from the Kiwis. And now we know our answer of whether or not Santiago could make the big save. She comes up huge for Mexico. Hassett does a nice job of getting in front, or White, excuse me, gets in front of the, the uh, Mexican defender, gets a good shot, but Santiago was able to reach out her hand and stop the goal from getting in. An excellent save from Santiago. A very mature save considering that she's only 16 and the youngest goalkeeper in this tournament. Mexico the other way, Mayor. Her goal in the second minute is the difference right now. But Mexico need a lot more. Their goal differential with England for one of the spots in the quarterfinals is still at minus five because the English are leading Japan right now 1-0. New Zealand needs Japan to come back and win that match. If the results hold, Mexico would join New Zealand as the teams that do not move on. And England and Japan would go through. Was Rebecca Smith wearing the armband. She played collegiately at Duke, a, a Rolling Hills, California native. Smith, the first player in New Zealand history nominated for FIFA Player of the Year honors four years ago. Pass it. And the football ferns will have a free kick here right outside the box. Perez just steps right in front, uses her body really well, but has it fell down and it's definitely a foul because she lets her arm outstretch had she just used her shoulder a bit probably wouldn't have been a foul but instead she used a bit of her arm and that's why the referee had to call the foul and this is very very dangerous for the Mexico defense and a good opportunity for the New Zealand offense to get a goal because of how poorly Mexico has been on these set pieces three of their five goals allowed have been on set pieces here's one for New Zealand slides all the way through and None of the Kiwis got to the far post. This is a great ball across. Urseg is right there, if only she had just slid, hoping that her other teammates were coming in. Green plays a nice ball right across the goal. Urseg is the only one following, and unfortunately for the rest of the team, no one else was there. But if Urseg had just given a little bit of a slide, she might have been able to deflect it a little bit and put it on frame. Whistles as uh, Santiago really taking her time on the goal kicks here in the first half. Great ball knotted on to Dominguez. Maribel Dominguez! 2-0 Mexico! Maybe this is why she was taking her time. A great goal kick play set up. Maribel Dominguez does a nice job of staying on side, but reading the service. Perez won the ball at the mid-stripe. And cool, calm, and collective. She puts it right into the far post. An excellent finish for Maribel Dominguez. I love to see finishes like that because she just made that look so easy when it's actually a very difficult goal. Just missing on the shot, Allie Riley. And Maribel Dominguez in her 93rd match in a Mexico uniform. She has now scored a goal in World Cups 12 years apart. 99 and now 2011. 69th international goal. She is Mexico's leading goal scorer. 
And once again, the goal differential deficit is back down to four for Mexico, trying to catch, New, uh, catch England for the final spot out of Group B. What I loved is I love seeing the competitive fires just when Dominguez scored, the first thing she did was not to celebrate, but to run and go get that ball. She knows that time is an issue here. She has to get as many shots as possible. Oh, Campo almost able to link up with her again. Denied by Ersig. Mexico beat New Zealand in a friendly in March 5-0, and they are up to zip here. And here's a look at the goal again. One touch. She looks up, knows exactly where the keeper is. Inside of the foot. Bends it far post. No chance for Bend in there. Excellent goal from Maribel Dominguez. And a kiss of the ball as she takes it back to midfield. Dominguez, their captain, the youngest of nine children growing up in Mexico. Trying to help them make the huge comeback here today against the odds. Well, and a reminder, the FIFA Women's World Cup 2011 continues from Germany today at 2.30 Eastern on ESPN. It's France and Germany. The winner takes first in Group A. The FIFA Women's World Cup 2011 is also available online at ESPN3.com. France in that match only needs a draw to win the group, which could be very significant for the United States because if the United States wins Group C, then that would drop the Germans into the other side of the bracket. And a yellow card out here issued to Rosie White. Yeah, you're going to get a yellow card for that. No reason to be pulling a jersey that far away. Just a little bit of frustra frustration and a little bit of youth from Rosie White. Just turned 18 years of age on June 6th. She'll be headed to UCLA as a freshman in the fall. Rosie did come on as a reserve in their English match. This is her first start in her World Cup career. This is a really unfortunate score line for New Zealand. When we talked to them earlier in the, in the week and the, before their first game, they all really wanted to put New Zealand on the map for soccer and not come away losing all of their games like they had done in previous World Cups. And to be down 2-0... It's going to be a difficult task for them to get their first win and even a point in this World Cup. They were really hoping to build off of all the energy and excitement created by the New Zealand men's team that even though they didn't advance last summer, they picked up three points on three ties. But thus far for New Zealand, that hasn't been the case. They've been close. They've scored in each of their matches. But they are in the process of trying to end the longest losing streak in World Cup history at eight matches in a row coming in. Well, and you can see that they're better. They're, the goals have just been, their losses have only been two to one in both games. So they're getting better. They just need to shore up a couple of more things. They have to take positives away from this tournament because... In a lot of the international's eyes, New Zealand is back on the map. They, they're not losing by as big a margins as they did in the first World Cup that they were a part of. And now it's just one goal differences, which is a big improvement in four years. You're absolutely right, Kat. They were outscored 20 to 1 in their previous World Cup matches, but just 4 to 2 coming into this match. And now a couple of goals for a desperate Mexican side that still has a chance to advance. And they have played with that kind of urgency today. Oh, 
They will also need some help from Japan. The Japanese trailing England 1-0, but there is still plenty of incentive for Japan because the loser, excuse me, the second place finisher in this group, Group B, would possibly end up with Germany in the quarterfinals, and that's not a particularly fond thought playing here on German soil. Dominguez. Headed into the area. Binden controls. Warbis. Robles. Mayor. Dominguez, fancy footwork. Riley is there defensively. Dominguez is a fun player to watch, but not a fun player to defend against. I've done it for a few years when I play with the national team, and she just always seems to get a foot in there. And just like, just like right then, she wasn't doing anything crazy, but she was able to get the foot in and still control it. If it wasn't for Allie Riley being right in, covering for her defenders, Dominguez would have gotten another shot on frame. Both today by Mayor in the second minute. Dominguez in the 29th, 2-0 Mexico. But right now, that is not enough to get them through. Riley. Cuts it back inside. She'll look far post. And Piago had it covered. Not a bad effort from Allie Riley. Putting it to her left foot, which is a strong foot. She plays left back in the WPS, actually, while she's playing right back here. But a nice shot. She's going to try and take it herself, try and get some goals for this New Zealand side, especially if she can get one before half. That'll give a lot of momentum to the New Zealand team. Zealand wins possession. Going here for the football ferns. We talked about trying to build on something here. This is a young New Zealand group. Five teenagers, eight players that are 20 years of age or younger, so Trying to set the foundation for the uh, Olympics next summer and then the 2015 World Cup in Canada in four years' time. Anna Green will take the free kick. Green. Santiago has it at the six. New Zealand is really missing out on these free kicks. They have a definite height advantage but they're not putting their players in position to win the ball. Instead, they put it on the ground, and they put it straight to the goalkeeper. You want to take it away from the goalkeeper, aim closer to the penalty spot rather than six-yard box, which makes the keeper hesitate, and it gives your taller players, your stronger players, a better opportunity to win that free kick and possibly get a goal for this New Zealand team. Dominguez plays it wide for Vinti. Ocampo. Taken away by Katie Hoyle. 40th minute. They're in Sinsan. Mexico with the lead, but they need more. Winning on the field, but not in the goal differential race against England. England leading Japan right now 1-0. Riley off the ricochet. Corner kick coming up for New Zealand. Allie Riley continues to be active, pushing forward from right back. She's just trying to take this all on her shoulders. A good effort, but Garcia Mendez was right there to deflect it and put it out. And here's another set piece. 
put it in the air and let your taller attacking players go after the ball. Rosie White with the corner. Looking far post and running on to try and get to it was Ersig. They'll have another opportunity here from the other side. Alina Garcia Mendez trying to get there defensively. A 20 year old and a former Texas High School Player of the Year before heading to Stanford. And a green with the effort. In front and slides all the way through. Ursic, pretty move to get another opportunity here. Hassett thought that shot was deflected, but the referee rewarding the goal kick. This is a much better ball. Smith just misses it, and Ursic is right there. Could have possibly even gotten a shot herself. And Hassett definitely has an argument as it yep. skidded off the cleat of the Mexican defender, so Mexico is a little bit lucky not to have another corner kick against him. Stephanie Mayor in just the second minute, and then Maribel Dominguez in the 29th, the goal scorers today for Mexico. Free kick here for New Zealand. A reminder coming up at halftime. First half analysis as well as an update from Team USA. And a foul there from Perez. The United States will be playing tomorrow afternoon against Sweden. Both of those sides are already through, but the winner of that one will win the group. Santiago claws that one out of the air. Green sends in a, is a very innocent ball, doesn't do much, but Santiago actually makes a nice hold on the ball. I, I believe it would have gone out, of bounds any, gone out of bounds anyways, but a nice hold. She doesn't deflect it and allow for a rebound for the New Zealand players running onto it. Goal kick for Benden here in the 43rd minute. Mexico trying to do its part and score a bunch of goals today, but they will need some help from Japan. And right now, the Japanese trailing England 1-0. They have to beat the English side in order for Mexico to have a chance with goal differential. Ellen White, the deciding goal thus far for England. If that stands, it would be England and Japan going through with England winning the group. Vinti sends it in. Vinden corrals it. Vinden still looks a little bit shaky. You always want to catch the ball at the highest point, and she allowed that to come in almost like a cradle for a football catch. And if a Mexican player had been running onto the ball, that would have been very dangerous. So she needs to go into the half. She's an older player. Just re relax and go back to what she knows of just of the fundamentals of being a goalkeeper, of catching it at the highest point and everything. I think the first minute goal really has affected her in this first half. France and Germany are through from Group A. Japan has clinched one of the spots in Group B. The other one right now belongs to England over Mexico with another half still to play. The U.S. and Sweden are both through from Group C and Brazil has clinched a spot from Group D. The other team, another Australia or Norway in a match that will be played tomorrow. New Zealand trying to get one before the break. Headed out at the edge of the box. 
And there is the whistle to end the first half here in Sinsheim. Mexico leading New Zealand 2-0 on goals from Mayor and Dominguez. And more work for them to do in the final 45. Coming up, the halftime report with Rebecca Lowe, Monica Gonzalez, and Tony DeChico in Wolfsburg as our coverage of the FIFA Women's World Cup continues after the break. <laughs> 